welcome. My name's Dr. Jason W. Morrison, and I'm a theologist from New South Wales, Australia. Psychologists help people with themselves and other people, and theologists help people with themselves and God. Okay, hi viewers, Dr. Jason W. Morrison, New South Wales, Australia. Um, I just found this story you might be interested in. Let's um, have a look. I haven't read it myself. It's come in 23 hours ago. It's by Nancy Levan. There's Nancy there, lovely um, person. It's from the Frederick News Post. Now, I don't even know where Frederick is, but here they are. Here they are in all their splendor and glory. I'm going to save that. I might be able to use that picture. I'll just put carts. One. Enter. Um, now, what's it say? Jehovah Witnesses from left. Igor Agu, Jessica Agu and Mike Dalquist are shown on the grounds of the Frederick County Courthouse on Tuesday morning taking part in what the group refers to as cart witnessing, wherein they engage with passers-by. Well, hmm, I don't know about this. I feel like grabbing the ones down at the waterfront and throwing it in the, in the drink. In his grey suit and crisp white shirt, that's him there. Um... Edgar Agu looked not unlike the lawyers scurrying to and from the Frederick Courthouse on Tuesday morning. Good morning. How are you doing? He called out, his tone relentlessly friendly regardless of how passers-by responded to the greeting. Some returned the welcome with a friendly hello or at least a smile and nod. Others walked by silently, eyes fixed straight ahead. Only a handful of people stopped to look at the brochure-laden carts set in front of Og and his wife, Jessica. Yet they continued for two hours, ever hopeful that their outreach would help someone in some way. They can't help anyone. They can't help anyone in any way. It's a, it's a cult. I'm surprised the courthouse lets them sit out the front of it. That, that conviction to give others hope through biblical teachings is a primary focus of the org's of the orgs identifies as Jehovah Witnesses, a conviction shared by 8.46 million, which isn't a true estimate. That is not a true estimate of how many Jehovah Witnesses are. there are, according to the organization's website. Like the first century Christians, the cult, it says religion, but it's a cult, models itself upon modern day witnesses shared with their faith through the door-to-door -door prophesying in more recent years, cart witnessing in central public locations. Bryce Helm Hemligan a spokesman for the Jehovah Witnesses International explained how the public outreach offers more opportunities to share the basic Bible teachings. It's becoming more and more challenging to find people at home, Hemelgard said. With the demands on people's time from work and other commitments, the idea was let's go where the people are. In both the door-knocking evangelism, which remains mainstay, and cart witnessing the intent is not to convert people but to educate using Bible-based teachings, Helmgarn said. Well, they can't educate people because they're deceived. They're deceived and they should be stopped. And they're standing out in front of a court. Oh, God. God. Gee whiz. Such is why Jessica and Edgar argue didn't actively pursue any of the people walking by them beyond a friendly smile and greeting. I think, personally, I think every single Jehovah Witness has a shadow of doubt. I honestly believe every Jehovah Witness has a shadow of doubt. That's my personal opinion. Um, does it work? The potential audience for Org's evangelistic efforts on Tuesday was small. A few waves of courthouse employees and law enforcement officers came and went. What the, what the writer here doesn't realise is they've got to clock up a certain amount of hours. They've got to clock up a certain amount of hours as publishers to um, mainstay their position. Uh, a trickle of what have appeared to be regular residents scattered in between. Pointing up at the ominous guy, Edgar Argue speculated that the predicted rain could be keeping the usual crowd levels down. Well, they'll say anything. The courthouse spot is generally less trafficked than other locations, such as the Frederick Transit Centre, where Mike Dalquist volunteers as a car witness with his wife. But, oh dear, Dalquist and the Oaks also take shifts in and around D.C., including in front of the White House, Eastern Market and various metro stations. Outreach in D.C.'s more urban, heavily trafficked environment tends to draw more attention, particularly from tourists visiting from countries where Christianity and Jehovah's Witnesses may be uncommon, Edgar said. Despite the lack of interest or response from a majority of passers-by Tuesday, 
Jessica Org framed the outreach as an exciting opportunity to share a positive message from a reliable source. Now that, oh dear, oh dear, a positive message from a reliable source. Oh my gosh. Oh, that is about as far away from the truth as you can get. That's why this organization is dangerous. Oh, look, honestly, it is not a reliable source and it's not a positive message. Dalquist recounted several close ongoing relationships he developed with people he met through proselytizing, including one with a woman he met about a year ago while Cart went to sing in a very, the very spot he stood on Tuesday. The woman's name was Regina and she was initially quiet, but she took several of the pamphlets which Dalquist noted was unusual. The two got talking and he learned she was sick though he didn't fully understand the severity of a cancer diagnosis until she died. Now, I hope she didn't get involved and then die of not having a blood transfusion. <sighs> Over the six months before Regina succumbed to the disease. Now, this is, and, and sometimes these are lies, these stories, viewers. Sometimes they make these stories up and they're lies. Over the six months before Regina succumbed to the disease, he and his wife stopped by her home for weekly Bible studies, he said. He was struck by the realization that they were, they would have never crossed paths through the more traditional door knocking approach because she lived in a trailer on a compound. Sometimes a single interaction can make a memorable impact. People will share their whole life story with you. Maybe things they've never told anyone, Agus said. Jessica Arg named an interaction with a young woman with two small children in Silver Spring. She was glad to listen as one woman recounted a few of the details of her current challenges with family and relationships. Oh gosh, I bet they're not as bad as the challenges the Jehovah Witnesses are going through that are shunned. And to offer what she hoped was relevant reading materials and a reference to the organization's website. Oh gosh. The website is, is an oft used reference for answers to more specific questions and for more people to approach them who speak a different language. Frederick's group of witnesses include specific congregations, Spanish, American Sign Language and French speakers. But the website boasts content in more than 750 languages. Dalquist often said he finds himself scrolling through the website on his phone, even during conversation in English, for more macro applicable scriptural references to someone's particular circumstances. I think sometimes people think we know everything about how life should work. They don't know anything. Dalquist said half the time, I have to look it up on my phone. And that's exactly right. Because they're programmed, they're brainwashed. Both Dalquist and, you know, you have to unravel the minds of these people when the, when the cults finish with them. And Edgar Agu, Agu each named a go-to Bible verse for general proselytizing. Edgar Agu picked Jeremiah 9, 29, 11, which describes Jehovah's desire for people to have thoughts of peace and not of calamity. I think a lot of people, when they think about God, feel like he doesn't care about us or how he could let this happen, Edgar Agu explained. This tells us the very opposite. The emphasis on justice and righteousness in Dalquist's verse of choice, which was Psalm 89, 14, 15, offered relevant comfort in times of political and social turmoil, he said. Of course, not every conversation goes smoothly. A Greg named a few discussions in which, based on tone and body language, he sensed a more contentious attitude. Still, he'd never been yelled at or verbally or physically threatened, at least not in Frederick, he said. And sometimes what starts out as a uh, contentious conversation can still end peacefully if, if it helps clear up misconceptions about the faith. Misconceptions about the faith? Oh my goodness. There's no misconceptions about this religion. It's a cult. It's a filthy, dirty cult, and it has to be called that, um, that might have sparked a person's anger or outrage. If scriptural education is the primary goal behind prophesizing, clearing up the many misconceptions of questions about Jehovah's Witnesses is often a secondary intent, Helen Gard said. Are you a Christian is the most off question, he said. The short answer is yes, um, but the nuances are a bit more complex. Yes, they are very complex. Unlike other Christian denominations, witnesses eschew the idea of a holy trinity in which God the Father and Son, Jesus the Son and the Holy Spirit are three parts of a larger single being, as inconsistent with the Bible teachings and said they see God or Jehovah as a single figure and Jesus and, as Jehovah's first creation, which is wrong, which is terribly and horribly wrong viewers um should we quickly do let's quickly do genesis 1 let's just quickly do genesis 1 i'm not a theologist for nothing am i let's just is it one 
Yeah, Genesis 1. Let's quickly do Genesis 1. Whoops, I've lost my glasses. I'm getting excited. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, so on and so forth. Now then God said, Now when you speak, that's your word, isn't it? Well, when God said, who was the word? When God said, when God's word came out of his mouth, who was the word? Well, it was God's word. It wasn't Jesus yet, because Jesus wasn't born yet. But Jesus was made out of God's word, God's sound. God's sound was put in Mary's womb, and it became Jesus. He wasn't Michael the archangel. He wasn't already there. He wasn't sitting beside God when the world was made. He was God's sound. He was God's voice. He was the audible sound that came out of God's mouth. That's why he was a part of creation. So when God said, let there be light, that sound was to become the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, how do I know this? Let's go to jw.org. Oh, we'll go to jw.org. Where is it? jw.org. Where's the Bible on this thing? Now, they've, they've, they've corrupted it. They've, they've abused it. They've, they've massacred it. But we'll use their lingo anyway. I can still get through their deceptions. Watch this. Can we move that across? Okay. In the beginning was the Word, right? We know how because when God spoke, the sound that came out of his mouth was going to be Jesus born in the flesh. The Word became flesh. And the Word, capital... Now, look at the... Um, what's it called? Linguistics here. Capital W. Capital W. Right? Why is there a capital W there? The stupid idiots, and I'm going to say that, these fools have given divinity to the Word. They've given a, a, a linguistic divinity to the Word of God, and so they should. Now, the Word was with God. Well, the Word was with God, just like my, my Word is with me. When I speak, my Word's with me, proceeding out of my mouth. And the Word was a God. Now, what they've done, this is some of the worst linguistic um, presentation I've ever seen. You've got the divinity on the Word, and then you've got the um, taken away for the God. Now, anybody, anybody, even a monkey could see there's something wrong there. Right? There is definitely something wrong with how this has gone. If they had left that as, a, as a, a normal W, they might have got away with it. But they've just reduced this divine word to just a God. You can't do that. It's either divine or it's not. Now, God's word is his word. Your word is your word. You're as good as your word. Right Now, if we go down a little bit, there's a little bit um, here. The word right, became flesh. It became flesh. The sound out of God's mouth became Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. God made himself, fire his word, a man. Now, there's a thousand reasons for that, one of which he, God can't die, but he could if he became a man. Um, but this word, again, divine word, capital W, which is a linguistic principle, um, fact, the Word became flesh. Now, who was that Word? It wasn't anyone. It was God's Word until it became flesh. When it became flesh, who was it? It was the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, can you see that? The Word that was in the beginning, that created everything, that was God's... Of course God's Word was with him. It created everything. Didn't become the Lord Jesus Christ until the Word became flesh. Then God's Word became the Lord Jesus Christ. So when Jesus spoke, when Jesus walked around speaking, guess who was speaking? God himself. We have to go to Hebrews. We have to go to Hebrews just for, the, for, my, for my viewers. Um, Hebrews. Um, Hebrews 1, yeah. This is the theological side of, of my life. Put a lot of decades into this. Long ago, God spoke to our fathers by means of the prophets. Now, this was, he used men, in, individual men, as sound pieces, but it was their voice, not his voice. 
His message was given to them and they relayed it. Now, at the end of these days, oh gee, they've corrupted this verse. He has spoken to us by means of a, and look at this, capital S. There's the, <laughs> there's the, 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 the linguistic indication that this person is divine. The capital S just in itself. But he's spoken in the end via his son. How did he do that? The Son was the Word manifest, made flesh. Jesus' words were God's words because Jesus was God's Word in the flesh, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the system of things. No, the system of things is not a strong enough translation. It is just not. It's not a theocratic system of things. It's the whole complex um, material of creation brought out of invisible things. We have to go to Hebrews 11, viewers, for me to get this right for you. <clears throat> Faith is the assured expectation of what is hoped for. Now that got ruined in the Jehovah Witnesses because it, um, Jesus never come back in 1914. So their expectations ruined. Their hope See, hope deferred makes the heart sick, Proverbs says. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. I'll show you this. This is why a lot of these people are sick. Hope deferred makes, now that should be enough, um, Proverbs thirteen twelve. Just quickly, I'll pick any, any Bible verse. Look, hope deferred, Proverbs thirteen twelve. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. Hope delayed makes the heart sick. Not getting what you want can break your heart. A delayed hope makes the heart sick. Here's all the different translations. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, which is the strongest translation, obviously. Um, a man who begins to help is better than the man that props up with hope. <clears throat> delayed, delayed hope makes one sick at the heart. So how sick are these Jehovah Witnesses? How sick are they? <clears throat> oh, do excuse me. I'll just stop this and clear my throat. You see, we overlook these things. So faith is the substance. Faith is the assured expectation of what is hoped for. Well, they have their hopes all over the place. Um, another reason for that is this. Bear with me, viewers. Now you've got me into the th my theological... Um, now, this graph was published by a man called Clarence Larkin. Um, and he produced this in 1914, coincidentally, which was the same year that the Jehovah Witnesses' whole thing collapsed and uh, not long after, Charles Taze Russell died. Now, the Jehovah Witnesses believe that there's going to be paradise on earth. But guess what that is, folks? That's Revelation 21. The earth is destroyed by fire. So what hope have they got? They haven't got any hope. Because their whole doctrine is, is a lie. Their whole doctrine is a lie. They've got no hope. Can you see that? That's why they're, they're disheveled. That's why there's, you can just sense something is wrong. I'll just quickly run you through this. Jesus crucified. Jesus goes to heaven up into his priesthood ministry. Um, there's a church age. Then, then we have the rapture. Up we go to sit at the judgment seat of Christ. Not for punishment, but for reward. Some will get a lot, some will get a bit. Um, then the clock, then the churches with Christ. Then we have the blood-washed multitude coming out of the tribulation. Here we have the 144,000 coming down into the last part of the tribulation to bring out the tribulation saints. That's what the 144,000 do. They're not sitting up here all on their own in heaven. The whole body of believers, people that believe in Christ go up there. The 144,000 who are Jews come down and get out the, the remnant from the tribulation. Up they go to meet with the church. And then we have Jesus comes back, returns, stops Armageddon, saves Israel. Then there's the millennium reign of Christ from Israel. And then the earth's burned. It's burned. So what hope have the Jehovah Witnesses got? That's my point. What are, They haven't got a hope. There's no hope. There's just no hope for them because their doctrine's wrong. And they won't change it. 
The evident demonstration of realities that are not seen, for by means of it men in ancient times had borne witness to them. This is the prophets, when God spoke through the prophets. But by faith we perceive that the worlds were framed, not the system of things. The worlds were framed and were put in... The worlds were framed by the word of God. Now they haven't got the W capital there, have they? But it was God's word, so that the things which are seen have come into existence from things which are not visible. So God, through his word, made him out of nothing all of this. That's how powerful God is. Now, I just thought I'd show you that. Now, what am I actually teaching on here? Uh, where am I? Um, how did I get onto this, viewers? Oh, goodness. Um, oh, I got right off track there. Um, that come from this article, didn't it? Witnesses also do not believe sinners are punished in a fiery hell of damnation but rather that a person's existence ends with death. Oh dear. No, it doesn't end with death, guys. You're an eternal being. At death, you go up to be with the Lord Jesus Christ, comforted by him in his presence. Your body will be buried in the ground. Your spirit will go up and your soul, exactly as you are now, without your body, to be with the Lord. Then at the end, then at the end, your body will be well. Your body is your body's transformed, isn't it? Your body's transformed here. Actually, the dead are raised first, and then we are alive to caught up the give it to meet them in the air. So it's actually before you when you die, before Christ return, your body gets put in the ground and your spirit goes to be with the Lord, right? But when the resurrection takes place, your body returns. Now you say, what about people that were blown up in the war and stuff? Well, the Lord made the worlds out of nothing. He can put people back together again, can't he? So at this point right now, even though the bodies of the believers are in the ground, they are in the presence of the Lord right now, being comforted. <clears throat> you do not exist. The, the, the Jehovah Witnesses' doctrines, the Jehovah Witnesses' doctrines are so misaligned. How do they get away with it? I'm glad Russia kicked them out. Resurrection is still possible, though only a select few will be anointed to spend eternity in heaven. Oh dear, dear, oh dear. More commonly known among non-witnesses are the ways in which the faith and biblical interpretation dictate certain lifestyle choices for its followers. Witnesses don't accept blood transfusions because of Bible verses that call for abstaining from blood of other people. No, it doesn't say abstaining from blood from other people at all. It doesn't say abstaining from blood from other people at all. I'm going to say that again. It says don't eat blood. There wasn't blood transfusions in those days. Oh my gosh. See how some of these media people just haven't got a clue? They don't celebrate birthdays, Easter or Christmas, due to the pagan roots associated with such a tradition. Drug use and sex outside of marriage are also off the table, though drinking in moderation is permitted. So there's a contradiction. Baptized witnesses who regularly and continually break what, what witnesses consider the Bible moral code are shunned or disfellowshipped. There you go. She's on to this. Though this does not preclude them from attending services at one of the church kingdom halls or gathering places. It does if you disfellowship, it does. If you disfellowship, it does. It's, marked, it's a marked contrast to an increasingly secular society, I get old admitted. But like the earliest Christians were in a minority, at times per persecuted for their beliefs, so too should modern witnesses expect to stand out, he said. No, there's millions of Christians in the world today hundreds of millions more than the eight petty millions of Jehovah Witnesses, and there's not eight million. Going with the flow is easy, Jessica Ord agreed. It's going against the grain that's difficult. It sure is, especially when you've got these horrible doctrines that, that this organisation has. As Dal Quist quickly chimed in, though, Jesus didn't isolate himself from those of a different, different beliefs. Witnesses similarly seek to engage with larger communities. Um, Dalquist, who works in business, said he interacts with all walks of life, many of whom might be surprised based on their professional interactions to learn that he is a witness. Jessica Org, who works as a nurse at Frederick Memorial Hospital, oh God, keep, keep her out of the blood transfusion section. 
said most of her long-time co-workers know not to approach her to sign a birthday card or attend a Christmas party. Otherwise, her beliefs don't play a big role in her work, she said. I hope she's not in the blood transfusion department. She emphasised the humanity that case witnessing and accompanying education brings to the religion. It helps people realise that witnesses share the same struggles and joys as everyone else does. Family finances, even questions of faith. Um, though Edgar Og said that he never doubted or questioned his identity as a witness, Dalquist admitted there are times when he has to remind himself to reprove what he believes the Bible shows through evidence and reason. Oh dear. The practical logic proven application appealed to Dalquist, who described himself as not one for the doctrine and for doctrine and theology. Well, he can't be, because if he was, he'd know it was all lies. Like the Orgs, he was raised a witness. It wasn't until the end of high school, capping off a period in which he consumed drugs and alcohol, engaged in other typical teenage stuff, that he considered a return to lifestyle beliefs he was raised in, though. At the time, Dalquist also looked into other denominations, but found the practical emphasis of witnesses' interpretation of the Bible the most valuable and understandable for coping with life's challenges, a source of purpose and hope. Well, he was raised in that. Past behaviour predicts future behaviour which is why he and Og spent time outside their free time at the courthouse or the bus stop, standing for several hours at a time, even in 90 degree heat or rain or snow, waiting for one off chance that someone walking by might just say hello. What a waste of time. What an absolute waste of time. Lies, deceit. That's all it is. It's, I'm not standing here with a grudge or anything. I'm telling you as a professional theologist, this organization is built on lies and deceit. Right down to Jesus' identity. They don't know who he is. They haven't got a clue who he is. They haven't got a clue who the Holy Spirit is. They wouldn't know who God the Father is. It all sounds right, but they're wrong. And they're critically and maliciously and dangerously wrong. This is Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia. Bye for now. Yeah, Dr. Jason Morrison, Theologist again. I just want to say thank you for watching the videos and I uh, hope you got plenty of uh, self-rediscovery and freedom out of it. If you watched it on YouTube, please share or like. Um, maybe even comment. If you watched it on Facebook, like, comment, share. Um, but most of all, get out and live. This isn't a rehearsal. You've got a one of life. Don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should be experiencing. Till the next video, thank you for watching and bye for now.